How are you doing? Great, how are you? I'm pretty good. We're very, very happy to have you on. Absolutely. Yes, it's going to be a fun podcast. Um, Jackson is just going to go down um, to get your um, head. It's a tough. Thank you so much for taking time to do this for me, brother. Oh, yeah, so it's connected and the audio is connected. Is he connected? Yeah, sorry, Laverne, you like cut out for a second. Oh, yeah, Laverne, you cut out for a second. Okay. Woo! Uh, Jackson, can you take him through the rundown real quick? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, no, you can just ask uh, questions, don't worry about it. Oh, gotcha. Well, look, we're going to have fun. I just want to let you know that, that it's all about, you know, just, you know, uh, celebrating your career and your new chapter and, and, and love and to start to have a new baby and all that good stuff. So just so you know, it, that's what it's going to be about, real talk. Real talk. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know, I'm trying to cover. I was in Vegas this past weekend for the flight and football party, so I had one good old weekend. So I get it. You're like, let's make it do what it do. <laughs> you got the fight. That was a good fight. Let me tell you something. I was five rows from the ring, and it was, I mean, neither one of them have anything. I mean, of course, I wanted to be it. But he has nothing to be ashamed of because he knocked him down twice. And I literally thought he had it. I mean, I was up cheering. Everybody was looking to be mad at me. I was like, I don't care. Um, and he, I mean, he rocked it. He rocked it good. He just, the dude was huge. Well, you know, Tyson's a traveler. They built a little different. He's Egyptian. Yeah. So, you right. know. Yeah. And he's a real gangster. You know, his family. You ever look at Peaky Blinders? No. Well, when they reference the Furies in Peaky uh-huh. Blinders, they talk about his family. They they real they serious out there. I know I know I know some people out there. Word. Like I know the original I know original I knew I knew them for a while too, but he's that that, that family is serious. Serious, yeah. Well I mean he did his thing. I mean I, I have to get it. He just Basically, outboxing the war down. I just got. I, now I want to see him fight someone besides Dante. I want to see what he looks like against yeah, somebody same. else. Yeah, it's been yeah, a, because that's what one thing somebody was telling me. Everybody's like, "What well, the thing with Dante?" He's Dante always been awkward, so he, yeah, yeah, he's never been a real, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, I used to be a fight promoter, right? Word, no, I like, oh, that's not what the okay. You ain't know that? Yeah, no, I did. You don't tell me about it though. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, you ready to get started on the Um. Yes. Just one. And real quick thing, so after we uh, finish the podcast, uh, Vivica will say goodbye, but if you hold on, just in case we have any quick pickups, because, you know, the internet in and out sometimes, so um, just hold on at the end. Okay? So good. All right. All right. Have a great show. Thank you, LaFern. Okay, let me count you down. And can, and can before you start it, do you want me to say, do you want me to, because uh, you know I know you're dead, but do you want me to say, Damon? I want to make sure you want your government name. Whatever you want. I want to say Jenny because I know you're uh, All right. All right. Here we go. All right. Three, three, two, one. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl, Vivica Fox. And welcome to an all-new Hustler with Vivica A. Fox. We are going bigger and bolder. Your hustle is going to get an upgrade with the most surprising Exciting and fabulous guests of all walks of life. You're in good hands, darlings. All right, come on in here. As me and my guest today, we go back like Kool Aid. My guest today is a legendary executive, producer, entrepreneur, and musical visionary who ain't afraid to get things done his way, even if some folks may not like him. But for all of his groundbreaking accomplishments, he really makes love for his family a priority. That's my kind of name. After all, he is in love for a living. Y'all get ready to learn how to hustle from the ultimate, from the hustle. Let me do it. Y'all get ready to learn a little bit more about the ultimate hustler, Damon Dash, who I call Dame Dash. <laughs> Welcome to Hustle with Bill K. Fox. Dame, how you doing? I'm good. I'm better now. How you doing? I- You know? Definitely. I can feel your shine. I'm, I'm getting a tan from you. I love tan. I like it. Woo! I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, like I said, uh, when we talked in the pre-interview, I just want people to get to know like a different side of you from what they think they may see on you know, blogs, this, that, and the third, to really get how you became the ultimate hustler. So let's talk about where, where are you from, right? 
I'm from New York, but you know, I claim Harlem like it's its own city within the city. Oh, why do you say that? Because it was its own universe. You know, it's where I got all my swag from. You know, it's the depth of my whole perspective on the universe. Harlem. Uh, I got that. Harlem is the coolest place in the world. Like, you know, everyone in New York copies everyone in Harlem. Everyone everywhere else to me copies everyone in New York, in America, and then everyone in the world copies America. So we're the root of it all. We're the seed. I got it. So now, can I ask you with the recent changes? Because, you know, in my honest opinion, Harlem has changed a little bit from how it used to be back in the day. Do you still see Harlem having that same swag? Well, everything changes. It's supposed to. Sure. So, you know, I haven't been outside in 30 years, so I would hope that it's changed. So I, I'm sure it's more evolved. And, you know, the way New York is, it's, you know, way more than just one culture in one place. Everything's all mixed up. And uh, the real estate is going up. So, yeah, the, the real estate in Harlem is going up. I would say that. Yeah, that's definitely been the most, the biggest change. There's I've a seen. couple of ideals that I, you know, when I left, were in full effect that may not be now. And people are surviving different, but I can't judge that. I'm not outside. Yeah, you see, but that's what I love about you. You're like, hey, do what you're going to do, and I'm going to still do me. And I'm going to keep going with my Well, I, I'm used to, you know, the world as I left it, as far as the uh, morals and principles, you know, my survival skills and what got me to where I'm at today. You know, honor is the only thing that's protecting me. So that's all I know. And, you know, maybe things aren't the same, but I still abide by the same honor code for sure. I know, that's right. So I have to congratulate you. I just heard that you have a brand new baby. Oh, yeah, baby Dusko. Where's baby Dusko? Uh, he might be taking a nap. You said, you said what you say? I'm sorry? I said he might be taking a nap, but he's around. <laughs> he's around? How old is he? He's, uh, he's pushing 11 months, so he's like late 10 months. You know, about oh. to be 11 months. So y'all trying to make sure y'all got him on a little schedule, right? Oh, he's on a serious schedule. He's been potty trained since he was about three months. You know, he can pick his states, his colors, he's talking in Spanish, you know, he can sign language, you know, floats for three minutes with the clothes on, his mom's been putting him through it. You know, we developed, a, we developed a curriculum. I've been spending a lot of time with a crew called the OSG, which is 120 Black Principles. I'm part of this group. And we're developing curriculum from the womb to three years old and so on and so forth. But you know, the right ones. Hey, can you, can you, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Hey, yeah, that's what, that's what say, uh, yeah. Right here. <laughs> that was some good stuff that you were telling me there. But the whole, I love that you're clean right there. Can, can we start that over because I want people to hear this? Like, oh, what I was saying is I'm part of a group called yeah. the OSG which is 120 black principles all over the world, predominantly unapologetic. And we've been developing a curriculum from the womb till three and so on. And, you know, we've been implementing it on my son. So it's been working and he can do a lot. He does sign language. He can pick his colors in Spanish. He can pick the states. You know, he was doing potty training since he was three months. He's sleep. He's coming. Uh, yeah, he'll be here in a minute. I would love to meet him before he wakes up from his No, he's not asleep. He's just on the other side. He'll be here in a minute. He's on the other side of the house. He had to catch an Uber. Oh, is the house that large? I'm just kidding. You know, you keep it real. I manage. I want you to have it going on. So, your beautiful wife, how long have you been married to your beautiful wife? Well, we've been together. She's wifey for lifey. So I love that. Yeah, I, I'm not going to get married to like fix all my tax problems. I'm not going to put that on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we've been living as married for about, you know, 13, I think 10 years, probably. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, you, you talk about, like you said, you, you uh, have a huge pride. You know, when it comes to being a woman, you know, and you pride with your family. Where did that come from? I mean, it just seems logical to me. I don't understand how someone doesn't see it like that. Like, why would you be working on something to pass to someone else or for somebody else when you'd be working on something to make, you know, your family's life easier and to pass to them? Why, why wouldn't you? Especially if you have a, if you have a choice, you know. You know, sometimes there's a perspective that gets implemented in your brain just because it's been pounded into your brain over and over again. It doesn't mean it's right. 
You got to go with logical, not what feels good, but what makes sense. Wow. Well, you know, I would just say, like, it's just like for us as an African American community, it's like we are just now starting to understand that if we have to make, you know, a good future for our family to pass on down to them. You know what I'm saying? Well, I've been screaming that for the last 20 or 30 years. And wow. it's just finally this generation is catching it, and I'm glad. And also, they've yeah. been seeing me fight and be sustainable without having to fold. But, you know, this, this opinion wasn't so popular back then because it was something that was being used to control us. Here's my little man right here. Oh, my goodness, my baby. Hola. 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 Oh, that? Yeah, he's like, I'm just waking up. Who this one? You, 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 it's all good. He is beautiful. Thank you. Look at that. 11 months old, huh? Yeah. You know, it's all right, funny. So listen, if you want to start talking, you know, just let me know. Oh, he's gone. He's like, I'm good. I got my He wouldn't start talking, you know. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was the main person because I think one of the things that oppresses us as a culture, what racism starts is us believing that, you know, the proper pronunciation of God's son is Jesus when it's Joshua. Jesus is the European interpretation of the name. And I would also be the same person that would say, how could Jesus or Joshua have blonde, 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 blonde hair and blue eyes and he from where it's hot? But I got two blonde haired kids and blue eyed children. I'm like, but the logic of it could be is Joshua's father was black. And his mom could have been Spanish because I don't know too many Spanish women that don't. Their name isn't even Mary or middle name Mary. You know what I'm saying? So okay. it could have happened and been misinterpreted. But at the end of the day, still black. You feel know I me? Mean? I, I know that's right. You there gotta he be. Goes, so he wake, he wake yeah. up now. And this, like, is, yeah, this is and this is Rocky wifey for life. And, oh, and you know, I'd love to meet her. She's coming over in a minute. There she goes. She, Hi, so she got her own television show. We actually was planning on uh, Fox Soul. Her thing is health as well. I recognize that voice. Yeah, that's the fizz out. I know it always gets me trouble. Y'all hear me so much. Yeah, I love it. Is it you, think, you think it's a coincidence that you're on Fox Soul and your last name is Fox? You know, I just shot a movie. And the main character's name is Fox. It's crazy how things happen, uh, right? I know. And, then here and Jamie we are Fox. Today. And here we are today. And then you know it. You have, I was I talking know. about your curriculum and all that. And how oh, you yes. Man, you does all, yeah, she's a yeah. super mom. That, also, she got a doc about infertility. We went through a lot to make him IVF. <laughs> we lost oh, yeah. We lost the baby. All that. We did a lot. I mean, a whole lot went, you know, a lot went down. Yeah. So, so we worked hard for him. Yeah, so that one there's definitely a gift, right? Yeah. They're all a gift, but we worked extremely hard for this one. Right. Well, I'm God, but God bless you with him. He, he looks like he's just, you know, the fact you said he's body trained, you speak language, sign language, and everything. Oh, yeah. Swim, she's been taking them through it. And it's documented. So you can see it all on her TV show, Health and Health as well. It's coming. And her yeah. book, her, you know, you know, again, they wrote a, uh, a what you call it. Oh yeah, she, where's your book at? Show me, show, give me well, the book. Well, I have a coloring book out right now right on now, Amazon, she... and then um, we have the the full kids book. I I need to put it out for the holidays. Oh, you don't even know what's, see, I'm in the house right now, but you know I got a full studio in uh, Burbank, but okay. but I'm editing, what I'll show you. I'm working from, because we just shot a movie, and I'm editing from the crib. Hold on. So we're editing, right now we're editing a TV show about the Oh Lord. On cameras, and this is in the house. This is C three hundred, all that same one they use. But we got our own studio. It's like we are our own world. We got our own app, our own television network. We make our own movies. We make our own clothes. We do everything. We make our own education. Everything. You know what I mean? I, I'm not going to depend on our oppression to tell us how to live and to give us education to, that just continues to control us. I said. Yeah. Okay. So you're. I got. I got. I got. 
So that's what I love about you, that it's like, you're, you're going to make sure that, like, the products that you produce and that people see, it's really and completely your vision. Well, like I was saying, you know, we're taught that we should, we're taught things to control us. And I'm not listening to our oppressor to give us education, to tell us how to live, to tell us how to eat, and to tell us what, our, what to wear. Our culture is the jewel of the galaxy. And of course, another culture would try to control it by making us think we need them to do anything or to produce anything and to give to our own people. So they implemented this program to keep us hypnotized, but we waking up because of information and because of people consistently fighting and showcasing. You know, to me, you don't, you shouldn't be famous unless you win a war for love. You know, like back in the Roman days, you couldn't, no matter how much money you had, if you ain't win a war for your country, you wasn't considered nothing. So I want to go down like Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar, but you know, without getting crucified and living longer and always fighting for a purpose and a cause, but doing it in luxury. But everything that we've been taught has been taught to us to control us. Agreed. Can I tell you, I, I believe the reason why I'm having like this amazing resurgence in my career is that I pay attention. And I said, it's because you're the real deal. Yeah, I'm not going to let this system tell me how long I can be hot, how long I can produce, how long, uh, you know, that I can't have my own hairline, my own movies, my own things like that. So we're definitely on the same page about that. Well, that's what so, my whole, that's the whole, my whole existence in the public eye has been that and leading by example and also watching the mentality shift. Because again, if you were saying that 15 years ago, they might have been ostracizing you like they was trying to do me. But I just like to fight. I want that smoke. I want you to tell me I'm wrong when I'm right. You know, I want you to tell me love is wrong and hate is right. Because love is going to win every time. So I, I just fight with hashtag, love. Hashtag love wins. I put it up every day when I do my uh, post on social media. I think. So I want to talk about you say, you say you like to have a core of good people. Around you, who you can trust. See, this is something else that this generation also has to learn. You have got to learn to protect your energy at all costs. And sometimes you have to see when somebody ain't really owned the team for us all to win. You know, it, it, it's a thing that happens with experience. You live and you learn. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to think that people you love, especially when you're young, before you've been betrayed, because you really had nothing for them to betray you for. You're young. But, you know, it's hard to believe that people you love would ever betray you. So the, the people that have done me dirty, when we were friends, I would never think in a million years that those would be the people that would do what they've done. So sometimes it takes experience to even understand what protecting your energy is. Sometimes you have to be exit or, you know, people got to get away from you that are usually in your, your presence so you know what energy is like without them. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you're used to being dysfunctional and shit like that. That's your normal. So right. you got to not only protect your energy, you have to identify your energy. You have to know what you want your energy to be. And then you have to fight for that and protect that and make sure you distribute it to the ones you love. Agree. And can I tell you, I am now a woman proudly in my 50s that finally figured that all out and finally have got comfortable in the skin that I'm in. You know, like I know my work. It took a while to get there, but it's like I get it now. So now let's talk about you when it comes to like, you know, starting companies and, and surviving the struggles, like you said. Like you said, you want that smoke. You like, bring it to me. Because if you don't think I'm going to win, I'm going to show you. Where yeah. did, yeah, where, where, where did, where did those visions and, 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 and your, and your, and your drive come from to survive? I like having a good time. And I, <laughs> and, you know, I only want to do what I dream about doing. I only do things to make money that I would do for free. You know what I mean? And a lot of challenges, because I can dream. I, I can do this thing that most can't. I can visualize things. I can architect my future. So I've been dreaming since I was young. When I was young, I dreamed about being, you know, the biggest rap company in the world. And I did it relatively easy. So then I dreamed about more shit. So I just keep dreaming. You know what I'm saying? And I know that when you dream, it starts with a challenge and a struggle. It's a fight to start something from scratch. So if I was complacent, yeah, I'd stay in the music business my whole life, but I did that when I was a teenager. It was like, why keep doing it? And keep talking to people that are younger than me as I keep getting older. You know what I mean? I'm not going to keep starting from scratch. You feel me? So then I did the fashion thing. But, you know, again, it was fun. 
I just was like, yo, hey, I don't think nobody fresher than me, and I still don't. So I make the clothes instead of buying somebody else's. And then I was like, what could I do next? Media. I want an immediate empire. I need that big, big, big bread. I already f- felt every kind of money you could make so far. And so, and I think the media money is the best, but it gives you residual income. You can own it. There's freedom in it. And also information is what controls the whole world. So we never had our own network owned by us. You feel me? You know, anything that says black ain't owned by black. So that's BET and anything else that come with it. So, you know, I need to make sure that the people that I see are not programmed or the people that I'm, you know, um, seeing that, seeing what I'm doing, my fans, the people that love me and that I love, the like-minded people are getting deprogramming, not programmed. You know, I'm not going to celebrate the dysfunction of our culture because it's interesting. I'm going to celebrate the function and the love and what it looks like when your dream comes true, when you identify your dream and what it looks like to live it. Some people are like, yo, I want to be famous. You know what it looks like to be famous when you wake up in the morning and how hard you got to work and what that is. So you have to know what your dream is. So when it happens, you've identified it. You can marinate it. But some people be like, I want to be this. Don't know what it is. Once they did, they are happy because that wasn't their dream. That was somebody else's. You got to know your dream. Let me just tell you something about you. You could always put yourself in a movie and it'll always sell. It's just at a certain price point. And that's it. You've already a brand. So you ain't got to worry about nothing. You can move when you want. If you can roll for 10 years and better, then you're good forever. All you got to do is keep working. That's it. But my point is you personally can star in any movie you want. And people, at least a certain amount, because you're a legend, will f*** with it. I mean, that's just, that's what happens when you do what you do. That's what me, I mean, it might not be the the big, but it will be at least a million or two. You feel me? So that's power right there. Listen, as a drug dealer, if you got a hundred customers, you could be ri- very rich. So if you know your hundred thousand people and they each spend a thousand dollars with you a year, you rolling, but you just got to give them a thousand dollars worth of shit to buy. So it got to be, a, like you said, a cosmetic, you know, it's the octopus thing. You're the franchise, and what are the octopus legs? What are the ancillary things? But you know, you know what it is. You know how to do it. And you know a lot of people. So, you know, it's been a long time. You, 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 you shouldn't be, you, you know you roll. Thank you so much. So let's take a look. Who are you God. Ah, amen. Uh, you know, it depends on what I'm doing. So if I'm doing a certain business, I'll call someone that's been in that business for a long time and I'll talk to them. I put together a crew called the um, the commission. And that's... Uh, wow, your house is amazing. Thank you. That's Senator Eddie Milton. That's Congressman Andre Carson. That's yeah, Bishop... That's Andre. Yeah, that's my, that's my brother. That's uh, Bishop... Um, Bishop <laughs> Purnell... Um, Dr. Pennell, who's a, the, the, she's a black woman on CNN every day. Yes. Um, uh, you know, this therapist I talked to, Taj and Melanie. Uh, and that's basically this do it all. That's basically the commission. OSG, Dennis McKeezy. I talk to the principals a lot. You know, I do a class with them for entrepreneurship every Tuesday. And then on Thursdays, all the principals do something called Off School Ground, the meetup, and they just talk about agenda, curriculum, and the things that need to be changed for our culture or the people that need to be helped, how to help them. So, can I, can I ask you, these principals, are they from uh, all across America or all across America? All across okay. the world. Oh, the world. Wow. Yeah. So, so this is a, a, a worldly thing that you're trying to do, not just in the States. Yeah, of course. Okay. You know, the okay. States. Okay, why not? I mean, also, you know, Mars is Mars is getting ready to be colonized. We've got to make sure that we implement the right education there, too. It's a new world, right? The end of the world happened. So we have to make sure that we're in the beginning of the new world so we don't end up in the 99%, that we're in that 1%. You feel me? But we got to establish law now. Education and everything. Everything is new. What advice would you give to someone who's struggling 
start their business. You have to find something you really, really love that you do so much that it doesn't feel like a struggle. It just feels like you're getting better because you're doing something that you really enjoy. Almost like a gamer that gets millions of dollars for playing a video game. Yeah. If you can make money from playing video games and you can make money from anything you love, you just have to figure out what that is. That's all. You also uh, say you have to be able to dream. You got to be able to visualize. If you can't visualize it, then how can someone else? You know, you have to be able to put that energy out like a magnet so it comes back to you. So you get a team of like minded people that are fighting for the same thing so that when they win, you win, when you win, they win. And that's why you're all thumping together. I love it. Now, you also said that you want artists to learn to protect themselves when it comes to like copyright, their business and their projects. Share that thought process. That, that we can pass on to young artists out there. Because a lot of people don't realize that when they sign a contract, sometimes they're signing away their rights. Sometimes. It's about their own stuff that they create. Yeah, I mean, plenty of time. It's gotten better now. Yeah, because I'm watching. But the reason <laughs> most, most artists don't understand that when you're young and you're coming from an extreme circumstance, you're young and you're coming from an extreme circumstance, extreme circumstance and you know you never had a dollar and somebody puts a million or two in your face and you could all of a sudden make things better as a young person you ain't worried about all that i remember being young but if you respect somebody like myself and you want to look like this when you're 50 then you might want to watch certain things that i watch so you can get to this place where you don't have to come outside for 15 years and you can sit and enjoy residual income and invest in your dreams while looking at a great view, smoking a joint. Word, look at there, look at there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Show them how it's done. Show them how it's done. And you know, and this is with every, I'm posing me black ball, but and all this other shit. But I've been able to create because I'm not going to be in an industry. I'm a making industry. I don't want to be in your house. I built my own. You could act like you're not letting me out. You're not letting me in your house if you want, just because I don't want to go. But you know what's going to happen? I'm going to end up buying that house and kicking you out just to show everybody that you are fronting. You understand what I mean? Can't blackball the person, the source. You can't blackball. You can't tell somebody or control a career if you are actually the person that's talented. You know, and I'm a talented businessman. So I don't want to be in a business where I can't make enough money for my children. I don't want to be in a business where I got to be told what to do with someone else from another culture is telling me what to do and how to give my culture my culture. It makes no sense. I'm not going to watch and watch other people from my culture be abused in front of me. I can't do it. So a lot of the times when you hear me beefing, I'm out of those industries. I'm like, I don't got to deal with Leo Cohen. And, you know, I call him out and whoever else I feel has been, you know, disrespecting our culture or exploiting us. I just want everyone that can't fight to know that I'll fight for you. If you can't say nothing, I will. Because I beat all of them. So watch what I did. And of course, they're going to pretend I'm not winning when I am because then they're losing. But that's the trick. You know, independence at one point was such an ostracized thing. I remember presenting it to the whole world and then saying I was crazy. But, you know, now it's different. But also... To make me feel anywhere. I did my job. I'd be like, yo, I'm going to stand out. You know, I think my responsibility is to pass information. You ain't got to listen. But I'm, my responsibility is to, to, to at least to, at least try. But I can never, you're never going to say I didn't try. And I'm never going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to just tell you the truth. That's right. Keep it real. And, 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 and a lot of times what people don't understand is because they've never been in this position. If you've never been a boss, then you don't know what it feels like to be a boss. You don't know what it feels like to pay people and them not appreciate you or them not do their job or them try to sue you when you should be suing them. You've never been in the position for people not to appreciate the opportunities that you gave them because you ain't never gave nobody an opportunity in your life. So you don't even know, might not know what it is that, you know, having money is problematic. It's not easy to keep money. Okay, okay. You know? But it'd be so many people that comment on people going broke that never had a dollar in their life. It's it's not easy to be a boss. It's not easy to have money. You got to get there before you understand it. So before you start ever judging, make sure you've been that person before you can judge that person. You know, make sure you cut a check to a nigga before and they violated or made somebody's career and they violated before you start telling somebody how to react to it. Yeah, I call that boss move. Now, speaking of boss move, you have a new show in love 
generations, like you said, the haters, the second and third. But it's also educational, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, everything we're doing in our life, we're evolving. So we want people to evolve as well. So everything I'm teaching my son, I want everybody to know that they can teach their son. You know, a, a better parents make better parents. It can stop cycles. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, people don't know how to be in love. For real. They don't even know what it looks like. So you want to show them that. So also all the entrepreneurial stuff, you know, and the mentality. And the reasons behind, like what you read in the paper about me, now you should know they're not going to tell you the truth. But I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. You know, from every lawsuit, the NFT, everything, because I'm dealing with it. It's not to, it's just to show you what happens at this level. And this is what comes with the game. This is what warrior status is when you're fighting for your family. Okay. I'm just doing it publicly and, and so well that people want to talk about it a lot. But I don't mind. So look, you're a queen, right? Thank you. So you're only going to be satisfied with a king. Period. And a king is going to fight so that you never have to fight. You never have to struggle. That you'll have enough money to walk away on your own, but he'll still pay the bill. You feel me? And until you find that, because you're such a high level woman, you're going to have to keep searching or, else, or, or get a boy toy. But that's about it. <laughs> oh, my God, y'all. He just took me out. <laughs> and sometimes you, it is what it is. Don't try to be like, yo, but you, you, got, you know, you got to be like, but you know what it is. You know what I mean? You my boy toy. But if, if, if you're not making my dreams come true, you're not my man. If, if, if your man is the man that makes your dreams come true. Period. Yeah. Unless they doing talking that, okay. they your boy toy. Real talk. Okay, y'all. Y'all heard it from Dad. If you're not coming right with me, if you're just a boy toy, for the moment, you're there for the moment. So here's the show. It's going to be on Fox. But you can't get upset. You got to remember he's a boy toy. Can't expect a boy to be a man. If you listen, especially if you if you gotta if you have to pay for anything for him, he's a rap. If he's going Dutch, he's a rap. If he got a two seat and he got kids, he's a rap. If he got a one bedroom and he got kids, he's a rap. Get him out of here. No, it's, I mean it, it. It may. Yeah, it should be. But again, I got a network. I got a streaming service. I shoot movies, documentaries. Oh, Dame Dash Studios. Oh, I can see. Yeah, you go to Dame Dash Studios right now. And it's all original programming with a point of view, scripted movies that have been in theaters that I've made and all types. And also while you're watching things, you can buy what you see without disengaging. So you can go to Dame Dash Studios right now and order it. You'll see it. I can, you know, I can show you better than I can tell you. And I've been at that. You'll see that I like to. I can't even count. I made a lot of movies. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, I own all the cameras. I got lenses. I got lights. I got sound. I just shoot. All I got to do is rent people, really. So let's talk about Dash NFTs. Yeah. And the artists that you did. You're like, you know, this is what I love about you. You got TV. I mean, I've had art, I've had art galleries. So I've had art galleries since I would say 2005. Again, you can Google it and you'll see it in Tribeca and Lower East Side in Charleston in Hong Po Hong Fong in Hong Kong in uh, Char Charlotte and in in, in 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 LA. So I've always had galleries. You know, when there was this Renaissance of art, I don't know. I, I hope you know where it was coming from. It was me and if I, But anyway. Um, and you can Google it. The receipts are there. Um, and now this NFT world has made it where you can monetize anything that you are passionate about and also track it. And when it sells, you also will always, when it resells, you'll always get paid. 
And I believe that's where the whole world is going. Um, and I, you know, like I would say 12% of the world knows it. No, 8% of the world knows it right now. So I suggest that, you know, the other 92 catch up. But yeah, I have a lot of uh, artists. We do things every day. So, you know, like I was showing you Raquel's coloring book, but she also did a children's book. So, you know, even that process. At 2005. So I have content that people have never seen. Hard drives full of it. But I also have legit bona fide artists that I've collabed with. Like, um, I think the next one that's going to come out, I don't know if I should even announce it yet, but it's with this dude, Wilder. And he makes, he does. Oh, oh, oh y'all. We're getting an exclusive. Yeah, he does the biggest uh, murals all over the world. And he's probably I, one of the I only ask, artists that still gets a, ma- that gets a million dollars alive for his piece. Wow. The art is that expensive? Every, my, the first thing I put up, the first thing I put up at the Dash Gallery was for ten million dollars, and you know what? That was in the newspaper. Ooh, I love it. So can I ask you what does the NFT stand for? Non fungible fungible token, right? Yeah, non fungible token. Non fungible. Am I saying fungible? Uh, no, I can't explain it right. Yeah. What that means, <laughs> but I can tell you what okay. I can. Just, I'm gonna just tell you this. There was a lot of money, dark money made in the crypto world because it was new. They created a currency and there was nothing to spend it on because they couldn't cash out because the government would be on their head. So there's a lot of people that made like, they made like $65,000 on the penny money. So they created things to buy and resell so they could cash out and pay the taxes on it. And also, it's a good... Well, it's in, like, what it is, is you mint it, so it's on a blockchain, so it's in the digital world. So every single, everything that's in the physical world is also going to be looked at as status in the digital world. So clothes, houses, real estate, art, everything is going to be, like, you know, just as valuable, if not more, in the digital world. And it's all tracked on a blockchain. You understand what I mean? Uh, you've always spoken about the importance of black ownership in the entertainment industry. How do black businesses need to evolve in every part of the process of using their film to become more successful and get more ownership? They got to keep working. They got to keep making more stuff. You know, the more stuff you make, the more successful you get, the more powerful you get, the more money you make. You just got to keep working. And you, ca- you, can't be, you can't be waiting for somebody to employ you. You got to create opportunities for yourself. That's the thing. I've never, I've never waited for someone to employ me. That's one thing I've never done. Mm. Dad, you've never worked for no one. You've always had to work for yourself. Not kind of. <laughs> you better pull out the receipts because I know you will. You said I always have. I mean, when it, I, you got to remember, I had my first. I was a teenager with my first record deal, and I never looked back. And before that, I was a drug dealer. So now nah, I never worked for nobody. So the hustle has always. I think once you know how to, you know, bottle something up, sell it, distribute it, and and also continue to do it like a business, and especially when it's not at the expense of your culture, it becomes a lot easier. You can always do it or at any moment. You know what I mean? Like the world, like I started in a world where there wasn't the internet, you know, where there wasn't so much freedom. And with the internet, it makes it really easy because there's a direct to consumer relationship. So even when people doing podcasts now, I was doing that like literally in 2005. So me, me and hip hop motivator was doing the culture vulture thing and just me and him would be talking and it would go viral, but it was more for the people that needed it. You know, it's like I need to go through certain things so the world can watch how to deal with. I mean, I've been through a lot in public, but who in life hasn't gone through a lot? I tell people that all the time. Sometimes you gotta go. You, no, you gotta go through things. Who you doesn't go through life. things? Yeah, you gotta go through things. I, I, I honestly, when I look at my life and everyone else's, I, just because people are famous, don't mean that it's more. You understand? Like I've lost people, but they were famous, but it hurt. But someone that loses someone that's not famous and they love them, it hurts just as much. So I haven't gone through nothing that no one in between life. The thing about life is everyone's going to die. So that automatically means you're going to feel pain. The loss of someone you love. 
So it's not a why me thing. That happens to everybody. In between the tragedies you can't control, that's where you gotta live and not give up. Because, you know, it's gonna happen. But, and it's, it's how you deal with those things. That's what defines you. That's what makes you evolve. So the only reason why things come my way is, I, like I said, I'm looking for the smoke. So if I wasn't looking, you know, if I was sitting around, and I, you know what I mean? If I wasn't trying to conquer the world, then yeah, I would probably have a more peaceful environment. But, you know, I think my, my environment when I'm not fighting is really peaceful. And that's what I'm fighting for. So when I get to look at my child, learn all these things and chill out with, you see, I got, I got nothing but puppies around me. You see? Oh, look at that. Just puppies and all that. Because they're chilling. They're chilling. Okay. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. No doubt. So listen, I, my time is about to start running out. With you. I just want to get a couple things. Also, you owe me an interview too. We got to swap. No doubt. We I bet. Are you in LA? Sure. Yes. Oh, pull up. Yeah, for the ranch. Pull up. I love it out here. I got my piece. I got you. So listen, how, 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 how did you make it through that? Because I, 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 Yeah, I excelled through uh, COVID because it was proof of my business model. It was almost like I had been preparing for it. You know, entertainment is usually is recession proof, but it's not. Um, it's not. It's not You got to go outside and you can't go outside in the pandemic. So content, which is what I've been aggregating and making for the last 10 years, became the price is double. And because I had a studio and owned the cameras, I was able to act. I actually went and bought a ranch to work on a man. And we were able to just shoot movies and we were more than magazines. I shot, I shot like four movies in COVID, you know? And, then, and, and you know, God, thank God, I haven't had any bad situations or not one of my sets because I'm so, you know, aware of COVID and respected so much. So when it's raging out there, I ain't coming out. It's, you know, in LA right now, it's about that. You know, every day I look and see how many people got infected the day before. So it's at like a thousand, it's averaging about a thousand a day. I could work with that. But when it's like 9,000, I'm not coming out. At 3,000, I cut you the gargle when you come in the house. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do all type of shit when you go in my house. We keep it all, we keep it all to clean. And, and, and I'm not saying it can't happen because this one went out to 7 Eleven and caught it. Oh my God, I did not go to damn stuff. Whoever it was, I don't know. For one second, she went outside and caught it. And, you know, but we never, it didn't hit it like that. Oh, you got that? Where the film was the um, was the cover book? This magazine we did during COVID. That's my daughter on the cover. Oh, I love it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. These are all magazines we did. Yes. Look at oh wow. Cool. Now yeah. yeah, we always make magazines and stuff. You know. I love it. Those I love those are the receipts. You know. I love it. So and tell me what do you see next for you besides the TV show? What's the TV show? Yeah. I'm a television network. <laughs> okay. Okay. It, 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 it's 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 taking this to that like I'm already made my dreams come true. Not only am I a television network, I also have distribution, Dame Dash Studios distribution. So I'm also putting out about nine other people's movies right now. So my dream was to become an independent full service movie studio that never had to ask anyone to green light. I am the green light. So it's happened. Now it's to take it to that scale. You know, I have a television network. I have a streaming service. I have the studio. I, you know, I got the distribution. Because before you make a movie, but you got to worry about getting distributed. That's not my concern no more. And, you know, places like Tubi, and that's made the world, the world is starting to come around. Like Tubi's like regular television where um, um, Netflix is like, you know, with HBO or cable. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of projects out there. And it's money on Tubi, you already know. I know, Tubi good, Tubi's good. Tubi is okay. good money, free. And guess, yeah. guess who owns Tubi? Oh. Fox. Uh, see what I'm saying? Bam, now, once again, the connection. Vivica, <laughs> the, the Vivica <laughs> effect, you know? <laughs> I'm 
not grounded at all. <laughs> I'm floating high, I'm flying around on the ground. I'm not grounded. I know, I know. Listen, you can never sit still during this. This is what I want to tell people about you. You've always been a mover and shaker. Look, we're seeing that in, in, in the interview. And, Absolutely. You know, I guess, yeah. And, you know, I am. video in our black excellence series check out the video right there next to me i think you'll enjoy it continue to believe and i'll see you there